Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Well, it's been a whole month. We haven't gone through the July figures yet. And today I decided it was way too nice to be sitting in the office. So I'm out here on the bike. We're gonna be going through the Fenland around the Cambridge countryside. And I'll give you an update on all things solar that have been happening at my property. Now, about a mile that way, there is a beautiful place where we can sit by the side of the lake and I'll tell you about our generation figures. So let's take a ride up the road and I'll see you in a few minutes. July wasn't the best month for solar generation. In fact, our July here in the east of England was roughly equivalent to about March or early April. Now we did have a phenomenal March and April, so I can't complain too much. So we generated about 970 kilowatt hours, which in the grand scheme of things isn't too bad, just shy of one megawatt. And as I say, it was pretty consistent throughout the month. When we look at a graph that shows whether we paid octopus or octopus paid us on the vast majority of days octopus were paying us even if it was more reduced amounts than from previous months okay let's get back on the bike let's head somewhere a little more out of the wind and let me tell you about what we did with all that energy So for those that are interested, um, a couple of years ago, I purchased this e-bike. Now I know there's gonna be a lot of people in the comments saying e-bikes are cheating, but hear me out. So in my younger days, I used to cycle quite a lot. In fact, uh, a couple of years on the trot, I did the Dartmoor Sportif, which is a hundred kilometers over Dartmoor. Um, possibly one of the hardest things I've ever done, but as I got older, my knees got a little bit creakier. I started to realize I was cycling less and less. And the e-bike gives me that freedom to go a lot further than I would if I was just on a standard bike. Now, don't confuse e-bikes with those things you see the delivery drivers all riding around on. Those are mopeds. And an e-bike, you actually have to pedal. There is no throttle, there is no ability for you to just press and go. You have to ride and then it assists you with your riding and you can control how much assistance you get. So to put it into perspective, my wife and I before our e-bikes would probably ride maybe once a week, maybe twice a week, maybe 10 or 15 miles, maybe cycle out to a pub, have some dinner. With the e-bikes, we can easily go 30 miles. And to be honest, without breaking too much of a sweat doing it. So if you are like me, you're getting on a bit. I'm in my mid to late fifties and you're considering, you know, what can I do to get a little fitter? Then I can highly recommend an e-bike. So we exported about 685 kilowatt hours of energy back to Octopus, and they paid us roughly 102 pounds for that energy. Now that works out at about three pounds a day, which let's be honest, nobody's gonna get rich earning three pounds a day, but that three pounds a day starts to add up, 100 pound a month, 1200 pound a year. And you can see whilst the export prices are still at 15 pence a kilowatt, this makes great sense. We also self-consumed about 214 kilowatt hours of energy. Now, if we'd have bought that at standard rate, that would have been about 53 pounds. So there's another saving. On top of that 102 pounds we got for our export, we saved ourselves another 53 pounds by self-consuming the solar that we generated. So that gives us a total saving 
somewhere in the region of about £155 this month. So I'm going to pop up on the screen now a new chart that Home Assistant has just rolled out. It's called a Sankey diagram. It shows the flow of energy from all your different sources to all the different things that consume it. And I think it's a really great way to help visualize where your energy is going. Now, as you can see, the big consumers of our energy were charging our batteries from the grid overnight. So for those that don't know, we grid charge our batteries even in the height of summer so that first thing in the morning, we're ready to start exporting because the energy we import only costs us 7p a kilowatt and the energy we export, we get 15 pence a kilowatt for it. So it makes sense to come into the day with a fully charged battery, export as much as we can, and then just buy back what we need to top those batteries up overnight. Now, the other two big things that we have that consume a lot of energy, one is our heat pump. But to be honest, at this time of the year, it's a rounding error because all we're doing is heating hot water for showers. Now, at this time of the year, with all this sunshine, obviously we're not heating our house. It's just for heating hot water. But it is still a significant chunk of our energy use goes into heating hot water. But again, all of that comes out of our self-consumed part of our solar generation. So it's actually cost us nothing to heat our hot water during the summer months. The other big thing we have, and it's a bit of a luxury, is our hot tub. Now with a hot tub, we have a two part strategy. We heat it overnight. We top it up by about three or four degrees using that cheap rate electricity at 7p a kilowatt. And then in the afternoon, if we're gonna be using it that evening, we'll, we'll just bring the temperature up to the level we want it, maybe using a couple of extra kilowatt hours from our solar. Again, it costs us almost nothing to run during the summer months because we have so much excess energy. So let's get back on the road. There's a couple more places we're going to stop. And next, I want to tell you about how we're getting on towards our goal of having a net zero energy bill for 2025. Okay, time for a quick break. So how did we do from a, a zero pounds energy bill perspective? Well, we spent about 71 pounds and change uh, importing energy. We got paid 102 pounds for exporting energy and we spent about 11 pounds on gas, which was mostly standing charge. But that's about to change. Anyway, that means ultimately at the end of July, Octopus paid us 20 pounds and change, which goes into our pot towards having a zero pounds energy bill by the end of the year. I'm gonna take a quick drink of water, we're gonna get back on the road, and then I'll explain how we're doing from the whole year towards that goal of having a zero pounds energy bill. Up ahead here is the new town of Northstone. Over to the left there, um, you can just see the water towers. That's the old RAF Oakington, a Second World War base that doesn't exist anymore because they're building houses on it. And up ahead, just on the horizon there, you can see the, uh, the schools that have been built. And there are a good few thousand houses here. Now, when this is complete, apparently it will be the biggest new town in the UK since Milton Keynes. But there's a bit of a problem. 
They built thousands of houses. They built some schools. They haven't built a single shop, a doctor's surgery, or any other facilities like that. So thousands of people that live here have to travel to other towns and villages in the nearby area for all their essential services. Why? I think it's down to greedy developers. There's money in selling more and more houses, and the longer they can get away without building shops and other facilities, it's better for their bottom line. Anyway, we're gonna take a right turn here, and we're gonna head out towards some of the lakes because they've built some really nice nature reserves. They've built some places for kids to play. There's some play parks. In fact, we're coming past one now that's kind of built into the landscape, but really nice infrastructure. They just need to get on and build the facilities in the town. So before we get on to how we're doing with our plans for a zero energy bill, let's talk about the heat pump and its coefficient of performance last month. Because I had it in my head that if we were just using the heat pump to heat hot water, that we would have a low coefficient of performance. Well, because there is so much heat energy in the air, we've actually had a record month. We had a coefficient of performance of 4.93. So we almost broke the, the five, the magic five that we're looking to get. But that means if we take a, a seasonal coefficient of performance for the whole of 2025, so all the way from January through to the end of July, we had a coefficient of performance of 3.53. And when I look back at how much energy the heat pump has used over those seven months, we're able to cover it from our excess solar. So it has cost us zero to actually run. Now I know we can make an argument that says if we'd have exported that energy, we'd have got more money for it. But the reality is we heated our home for free. So as I said earlier, we had a bill this month of minus 20 pounds and 25p. And when we add that to everything that we've, we've earned this year, our current standing at the end of July is minus 171 pounds and 37 pence. And that includes obviously taking into account we had a relatively expensive January at about 105 pounds and we had a relatively expensive February at 91 pounds. But every month since then, March through July, we've been in negative territory. And that means we end up with a bill today of minus 171 pounds. Now, obviously I can't predict the future, but looking at what I would expect based on last year's figures, I think we could reach a figure somewhere between minus 200 and minus 300 pounds for the whole of 2025, which would be an absolutely brilliant result. So it just remains for me to say, thank you for joining me on this ride. I know this is one has been a little bit different. Um, hopefully you got the data you wanted from it. So for those of you that are looking at a solar system and saying, what does a real world system produce? Well, you can use my data as one data point towards helping you make up your mind whether solar would work for you. So with that, I'm going to get out of here, but if I'm lucky, I will see you back here real soon for another video. Take care. Bye-bye.